It was Michigan State's day in the sun on Big Ten Network. What did Mel Tucker have to say? Jay Johnson, Scotty Hazelton, and then, hey, what else do you guys still want to see or hear before the first game in a few weeks? Let's go. You are Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's show of Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white five days a week. Man, every time I flip on this camera and microphone, it, it really takes me aback how close we truly are to kickoff. And well, if you're in the metro Detroit area like I am, th- that 62 degree day we just had, but whew, I can feel the cinnamon whiskey in the air. Someone get me on a East Lansing parking lot stat. God, kickoff is just right around the corner. This is great. Hey, before we get into today's show, please rate, review, and subscribe to this here program. It's Locked on Spartans. I'm your host, Matt Sheehan. If you ever want to reach out, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. Let's get into the mix here, shall we? All right, Big Ten Network, they are doing their big bus tour bonanza like they have been doing, God, ever since I can remember this network being around. And Michigan State was the 10th program these gentlemen have visited on their road trip, which that's that's really going to suck for Jerry DiNardo and the, the whole gang next year when USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington are added into the mix. God, they got to start that bus tour in late June if they want to get every school in. But hey, that's not my problem. Let's stick to Michigan State here. Jerry DiNardo, speaking of, on the bus stop said, quote, this is our 10th stop. To me, this is the team that has made the most progress from last year. Now, before going any further, Yes, I, I want to clear something up here. Contrary to popular belief, no, I'm not an idiot. All right, I know how these Big Ten bus tour stops go. Every team is undefeated in August. Every team is set to hit the over on their wind tunnel, according to Big Ten Network. I mean, the, these guys are never going to stop and talk to the camera about, uh-oh, this is going to be a really rough season coming up for these guys. Like, no. I know they're only going to talk about good things here, guys, but we're going to pick out the parts that we think are going to be true. All right, just like I said, we've watched a lot of these bus stop tours. I think we're starting to get good at what's fact, what's fiction, but hey, being the most improved team from last year so far in practice, again, this doesn't go on the win or the loss record, I think there is some fact here. Now, again, we are the 10th team that they have visited. They have yet to visit Purdue, Illinois, Iowa, and Wisconsin, and it is not lost with me that three of those teams, Purdue, Iowa, Wisconsin, well, they are Michigan State's best competition for being, quote, most improved teams. Illinois, I don't think they can improve much on that, but the other teams, Purdue, Iowa, Wisconsin, yeah, I I think that they have some improving to do as well. However, I still think that Michigan State could be the most improved team coming into next season, even of those three teams we just named. Look, Iowa... They just need to shape up the offensive side of the ball for them. They just have to go from absolute dog manure to just moderately okay. That's all the improvement they need to do. Wisconsin, drastic improvement is going to be needed there, but it's going to be really hard, I think, to do it in one offseason going from, well, what we all know Wisconsin as, a ground-and-pound team, to this air raid that they're going to be trying to do here in one year under Luke Fickle. I think that might be too steep of a mountain to climb. And then Purdue, again, a new coaching staff, new regime there. That's a lot to ask for. Whereas Michigan State, well, not only, hey, can Michigan State improve because it's the fourth year under Mel Tucker. A lot of the players know what is expected. But let's just talk about it bluntly here. They left themselves plenty of area for room for improvement. So, hey, we're going to talk offensive line here. We talked about it ad nauseum in the last week or two of shows is that in running metrics, Michigan State was behind 100th in the nation in opportunity rate, stuff rate, power success rate. All right, we're not going to go through all those again. Just take my word that those are very important metrics in the run game. They were outside the top 100 in the nation. Much Much improvement needed there. And what has been talked about up and down this offseason from the coaching staff, from players that talk to the media, or, hey, yours truly, 
your favorite podcast host. We've talked about the depth on this offensive line being much deeper than it has been. More on that later when we get to Jay Johnson. But hey, back to improvement. The defensive line, they were in the bottom third of the conference in run defense last year. Mel Tucker's talked about this up and down, adding personnel to the defensive line, all the transfers they've added, at least six foot five, at least 300 pounds to go on top of the guys still here in Derek Harmon, Simeon Barrow, Maverick Hansen, which God help us. It'd be great if they could just stay healthy for an entire season. And then as well, well, the secondary could use some improvement. I'm not going to go through all the stats there. You guys know the story with that one. And also kicking, yeah, hopefully we could do a little better than 50% there. So, yes, look, Michigan State 5-7 and seven last year, but they have left themselves so much room for improvement. But also what we have been seeing and hearing about in press conferences, in media availability, in the little practice sessions where the media can take a peek inside too, and just on the roster as well, how you're shaping up this roster – you can see where the incremental progress is happening before the ball is even kicked on September 1st. So, yes, I am going to trust good old Jerry DiNardo of Big Ten Network when he says that, yeah, this is the most improved team that they've seen so far out of the 10 teams. Now, hey, they're they're going to need to see a lot of improvement from last season, and that goes without saying. That's what happens when you're a 5-7 and seven football team. Your fan base is going to want to see some improvement. Well, Guys, we've talked up and down about how hard the schedule is, and there's just one more piece of evidence that really points to how tricky this could be for our Spartans here. The coaches poll came out last week. The AP Top 25 just came out on Tuesday, and it is, uh, it's is—it's a lot of what we know, guys. It's number two, Michigan, number three, Ohio State, number seven, Penn State, and number 10, Washington. What do all four of those teams have in common? Well, number one. They all won 11 games last year. Great. Good for them. That's awesome. I great. I bet they had a fantastic time at all of their bowl games. Uh, number two thing they all have in common, they all play our Michigan State Spartans. You already knew that. But did you know that Michigan State is going to be the only team in the nation to have four games against top 10 opponents in the AP poll next year? I bet you didn't want to hear that, but that certainly is the facts there. And, well, if that isn't good enough, here's some icing on the cake for you. Michigan State's first road game at Iowa is going to be a ranked game as well. At least the preseason, preseason poll tells us. That could change by the time that game kicks off in Kinnick. Iowa plays at Iowa State, just three-point favorites. That's a coin toss game, as it always is in that matchup. And then they go to Happy Valley to play a very good Penn State team. So we'll see if they're still ranked in the top 25 when the Spartans go down there. But, hey, for now, that's five teams in the top 25 AP poll. Four of them in the top 10 Great. Awesome. Uh, hey, you know, really quick, speaking of that Iowa game, some other news. This was tweeted, tweeted out by Brett McMurphy of the Action Network. Some Big Ten kickoffs were announced as well and some channels. 3.30 on Peacock for Michigan State's first road game at Iowa. So, yes, it, it's not just that Washington game so far. It's probably not going to be just those two games, the Iowa game and the Washington game. And, well, if they're going to have these games – Bleeding into basketball season on the Peacock, it, it's it's best that you look into the subscription here. Again, I look conference expansion, the whole media market thing. It is inevitable. It is not changing. So just uh, try to em embrace it. I guess. Woo. Games on the Peacock. All right. Good job, everyone. Michigan State is not exclusive to that either, by the way. As we all know, Michigan, they kick off their season on Peacock. Ohio State just announced that they're going to have a game on Peacock as well. Every team in the conference gets the joy of playing on Peacock. So before you go screaming about Alan Haller not doing his job or Michigan State bending over backwards, I, everyone's bending over for the good old Peacock right here. All right, gang, we will get more into what Mel Tucker had to say. Jay Johnson, Scotty Hazelson here in a hot second. Just need to talk your ear off about Nutrafol. That is right, the game-changing product out there for your hair health, gang. It is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supp supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Because, guys, did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime. And I'm not a doctor, but I'm just going to assume that number goes up to 99% if you are a college football fan this season. So, hey, let's get prepared, fellas. 
Go to Nutrafol.com slash men to take their hair health wellness quiz. Identify causes of your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair health through the whole body wellness. Just take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code Locked On College. That's all one word, by the way, Locked On College. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spell N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men and enter promo code Locked On College. That's Nutrafol.com slash men. Promo code locked on college. And that's right. It's time for home field apparel this fall. If it's Saturday game day, it's home field on the body. If it's a tailgate, it's home field on the body. If it's a road game and we're at home, it's still home field. If there's an untimely funeral this fall, well, Buster, if it's on a Saturday, I'm sorry. I'm rocking home field because they are the greatest clothing line out there. Which way do you want to take it? Do you want to go left or you want to go right? Let's start going right. Let's talk about these designs. These are the greatest vintage designs possible. If you have not gone to homefieldapparel.com, it's not just clothes shopping. It is a history lesson with every click of an apparel item that you have. All right, now let's go to the left side now. Think of an angel warming you. <laughs> giving you a warming hug. How could that feel on your torso? It feels amazing. That's what Homefield gives you every time you put on one of their shirts, their sweatshirts, long sleeve t-shirts. So go to homefieldapparel.com, stock up for the fall because, hey, with your first order with promo code LOS23, that's 15% off. Again, homefieldapparel.com, promo code LOS23 for 15% off of your first order. All right, let's get back into the Big Ten bus tour bonanza mix here. And look, we have heard Mel Tucker talk a lot this year. We've heard, you know, Jay Johnson talk, Scotty Hazleton talk. And look, what has Mel Tucker already talked about? He's talked about getting bigger on the defensive line. He's talked about battles at every single position. He's been talking about, hey, being healthier in camp, less contact, less thud hitting, if you will. Uh, that's a term that he's like to use. And I'm going to start using that in my own life as well. But until then, what was kind of new that he talked about with Big Ten Network? They did a really good job with the interviews, very pointed, direct questions as well. And well, a lot of them were about battles. We're going to stick a lot on the offensive side of the ball here because plenty of position battles pretty much at every stage of the game on offense. On the quarterback battle, when it comes to Noah Kim, Kaiten Hauser, and also Sam Levitt as well, which we're going to pause here before even hitting a quote. That's something I keep finding very interesting throughout fall camp, is that whether it's Jay Johnson or Mel Tucker, this isn't a two-man race according to them. This is a three-man race with Sam Levitt, the true freshman out of the Pacific Northwest, I, I Look, I have a hard time believing that is a genuine three-horse race. I would give Sam Levitt maybe a 1% chance, but that can't be ignored, the fact that they refuse to call it a two-man race. I, I, I Maybe Sam Levitt truly is the truth. I think he's going to have a fine career here in East Lansing, but God, I didn't think it'd be before he even steps foot in a lecture hall in East Lansing. Anyway, on the quarterback battle, Mel Tucker said, quote, still open. I like the way they're competing and their demeanor. It's a healthy competition that's about the team. So, of course, hey, he didn't say on Big Ten Network, looks right at the camera and says, it's Kaden Hauser, or, yep, it's Noah Kim's time. Now, it's still going to be an open competition. They do have a scrimmage this Saturday where Mel Tucker said earlier in a press conference the other day that, hey, this is going to start to shape up a lot of the two deep here, so maybe we get closer to the end zone for a starting quarterback. But as of now, still wide open, but also commented too on Big Ten Network that it gets looked at even outside the sidelines, in between drills, during water break, stuff like that. How are these guys composing themselves in front of the team? How are they leading the team? I mean, God, this... Look, being, being a quarterback has got to be stressful enough in college. The fact that you get zero off time in a quarterback battle because you can't even take a sip out of a Gatorade bottle without Mel Tucker looking at you to see how you're doing it. I, I do not envy what Kaden Hauser, Noah Kim, and well, Sam Levitt have to go through this fall. But, hey, 
Them's the breaks if you want to be a Big Ten starting quarterback. He also sounded off on the running back room, pointed out Nathan Carter said, quote, done an outstanding job and, quote, has broken some big runs this camp. Also mentioned Jalen Barber and speed. And during media availability last week, Jalen Barber was mentioned quite a bit here. I think Jay Johnson called him by name and said that he is going to be the fastest running back in the conference. Not, not just on East Lansing soil, not just in the state of Michigan, but the true freshman, the speed. Speed demon out of the West Coast, already the fastest guy in the Big Ten. Hey, go ahead and look at his 100 meter dash times in high school. I that might not actually be far from the truth. I don't think that's a lot of fiction there. I think that Barbara can truly be that. I mean, lethal with with the cleats on. It'll be interesting to see how much he gets on the field. Okay, we got a stacked running back room: Nathan Carter, Jalen Berger, Jaron Mangum as well. I'm not sure if Barbara's body is quite there yet, ready for Big Ten play. But, hey, if you just need three to five carries from him just to speed things up, pun not intended, go for it, I guess. Also, wide receiver room. Mel Tucker's really good at this, guys. He was asked about the wide receiver room. He basically named the entire room. In order, he named Trey Mosley, Montori Foster, Tyrell Henry, Jerron Glover, Christian Fitzpatrick, Antonio Gates, and then just the tight ends. Uh, he, he basically named everyone on that. Let's go over to Jay Johnson right now. Let's keep it on the offense. Again, he keeps talking about the three-man race. He is looking forward to this week's scrimmage to see how these quarterbacks are going to separate themselves. And also, the offensive line. I thought where he had the most interesting quote there said, quote, we don't have the big drops. Look, we know that the depth is going to be a little better this year than it ever was before in East Lansing, at least under Mel Tucker. I think that this could be the deepest offensive line room since 2017, if not maybe even 2015. It has been a while since we've had an offensive line room that you look at it and it's like, hey, we have bodies, plural, here. Jay Johnson basically said as much, a, a very diplomatic way of saying it, quote, we don't have the big drops, but that's just a very gentleman-like way of saying that uh, the, the difference between first string and second string last year was the Atlantic Ocean. That's how wide that was. Uh, also, what is left to accomplish this camp? Sorry, Rick Pizzo asked him right there. What do you have to accomplish still in these last two weeks here? And he actually didn't really say much. Uh, what he did say, though, is a, a big positive. Quote, I feel like we are light years ahead of where we were last year. I got this could all be attributed to the health that Michigan State has had in the offseason. If you remember in the offseason of the 2022 season, three offensive linemen ready for spring. It's been a different story this uh, fall and spring as well. Scotty Hazelton, defensive coordinator, he talked as well. As far as goals of the defense, because believe me, if we've watched the defense the last three years, there is no shortage of goals that this defense should have to attain for themselves. Scotty Hazelton said, stopping the run to, quote, earn the right to the rush. Stopping the run early on, not Hey, letting the other team bite off seven yards on first and 10 on an inside zone run to set up a second and three, and then you're already behind the eight ball. It is getting them to second and eight. All right, third and seven. Now you can rush the passer. And look, I know that seems very obvious, but Michigan State last year gave up 4.3 yards per carry. That was amongst the worst in the conference. We saw it completely completely derailed games throughout the season last year, just getting into these third down situations. And well, God, look, our, our team had a hard enough time getting off the field on like third and 13s. Uh, yeah, the other teams did quite fine on third and fours and the likes of that too. Uh, also, he was asked about, hey, compare this defense to the ones that you have previously coached at Michigan State. He said, quote, up front, we have way more depth. Again, that is no mistake. That's Dre Butler, Jarrett Jackson, Jalen Sami on the defensive line. Also a ton of great linebacker talent coming back as well. You only really lost Ben Van Sumer from last year. And quite frankly, if you have Jacoby Winman, Cal Halliday, Aaron Brule, and we'll see about Darius Snow if or when he can be healthy to go this season. I mean, that's an instant upgrade right there. And what else is there left to accomplish for Scotty Hazleton and this defense ahead of kickoff? He pointed out the details. He pointed out penalties specifically on the defense. And this wasn't a defensive-specific issue last year, but it's good to remember that Michigan State gave up the fifth most penalty yards in the conference last year. Again, not just a defensive issue. I mean, I, 
we, we all know that you could count on Jarrett Horse for at least 15 yards per game last year. God bless him. But, whew, wow, he played with a chip on his shoulder, didn't he, last year? Um, the defense, though, hey, you know, I, he specifically pointed out when we are at second and 12, might be a good time to not commit a holding penalty. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know that's probably obvious coaching, but, hey, I, it's also good to reiterate here in the last two weeks as we go into kickoff. Now, that is a lot that has been said by Mel Tucker, by Jay Johnson, Scotty Hazleton. I mean, we're going to still get more media availability throughout the next few weeks here. But, hey, I went on Twitter.com and said, hey, what is one thing that you still want to see or hear out of fall camp before kickoff begins? And Chief of Propaganda, look, if you're filling out a bingo card with all these answers, He's got your free space right here. All right. We just had him on not too long ago. Great chat with him. He writes, secondary is shutting guys down. I got to say, it, it doesn't it feel like we've heard about every single position group on this team, down to the punter, down to the kickoff guy, but we have not heard Jack Diddley squat about the secondary. That could be terrifying. That 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 could mean that well, I, guys, we we are just the same as we have been the last few years. Let's just really hope that this pass rush is going to help some things in the secondary here, or is it just hey, we're not going to talk about it because we're just going to let their work show everyone what they can do. I really hope it's the latter. That'd be really great. That would just make everyone happy. What else do you still want to hear? Latour de Sav says at least two to three comparisons to the greatest players of all time. I can only imagine that is a direct shot to what is going at the school down the road. And who is, who is Bill to have a great season? Again, I will say it every time they're brought up here. Complete colossal failure if they do not win the national title. They are the best team in the country next year. So much returning talent. But wow, I mean, literally comparing quarterbacks to Patrick Mahomes and a backup. This was the newest one today. Comparing the backup quarterback to Devin Hester a kickoff return guy. I, you you talk about giving yourself as much hype as humanly possible. I mean, God, I, I don't know. We'll see if that strategy works out over there in Ann Arbor, but I, I don't know if I necessarily want that in East Lansing. I mean, look, Deepwater Connoisseur, he writes in, Kaden Hauser looking like a young Connor Cook. I, I kind of look at this the same way that I look at Michigan State not getting a single vote in the AP poll or the coaches poll, which why should they? I'm not going to be upset about that, but – Maybe we just go into the season as silent as humanly possible, kind of like we did in 2021, and just let the action do the talking for us. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily hate that either. Maxwell writes in a big one as well. A massive storyline going into the season. Improvement from linebackers in pass coverage. Now, Mel Tucker did talk about this on Monday at media availability. Didn't say, you know, hey, our guys are so much better at pass coverage, but he did talk about that nickel position. We talked about this not too long ago, too. A lot of nickel talk going into the season for a great reason. Now, Mel Tucker, sorry, Mel Tucker said that he is working three to four guys at that nickel position right now. It's also been said that Darius Snow, who is normally at that position, he can do some drills right now. He is not cleared for full contact, full football activity. So as we are waiting for Darius Snow to come back, well, who are the three to four guys? Mel Tucker said he wants some hybrid linebackers, you know, guys that could tackle, guys that could pass coverage as well, and then basically pure defensive backs as well. For hybrid, I think he said as much that it's Aaron Brule, you know, the Mississippi State transfer from a few years ago. And then I do wonder – if it's Jordan Hall, could be the third linebacker should Aaron Brule he'll falter, falter a little bit. There's been a lot of Jordan Hall talk from, God, last spring when he was an early enrollee. I mean, and Cal Halliday was on Big Ten Network, too, talking about just how crazy it is, how mature he is, how up to speed he is already just as a true freshman. So I think it's Brule and Hall battling for the third hybrid position. But for the third linebacker, if it's a defensive back, I can only assume Angelo Gross is going to be there and look solid run stopper. I, it'd be just delightful if we could just slightly pick up the passing coverage as well. But behind him, I, Chester Kimbra, perhaps uh, Dylan Tatum. I wonder if he's going to be in the mix for that nickel, but I think they're going to try to keep him at a solid cornerback position. But hey, we'll see if they can actually do that or if they're going to need to use the Case of emergency, break glass on Dylan Tatum for that position. Blair writes in a, a just a fantastic one. 
I'm going to set the bar super high here, but our lawn snapper, holder, and kicker have built elite chemistry. They've committed to sharing a one-bedroom apartment with Keen Mattress to become the three best friends that have ever existed. They have the same class schedule. They go everywhere together. Blair, I don't know if we're going to hear that verbatim out of camp, but I would. I'd be jazzed over the moon if we get to hear just anything, just even half of that. The chemistry in the kick game. I, oh, boy, I'd, oh, I'd, I'd fall over. Now, C.W. Harris, my guy C.W., he writes something completely irrational here. He writes, I'm just looking forward to seeing them play in a game and seeing how we look. CW, don't you know how this works, man? No, we got to speculate and dive into every single syllable of every single word that is said in fall camp. I, I'm not just going to sit here and wait until kickoff against Central to make a rational decision about how I feel about this team. No, come on now. We need it now. Uh, Alex Daly writes in, more press coverage from the cornerbacks. They have played too far off the line of scrimmage and allowed too many easy pitch and catch opportunities these past few years try literally everything in pass coverage for all I care. It'll be interesting to see how, how it goes. I, I feel like we can't make a good judgment on that, unfortunately, until we play Michael Penix for the 17th time in his career to get a feel of, okay, do we have hope for the pass coverage stepping forward here? And do we need to implement more press or anything like that? It's gosh. I, 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 need, I need progress. You guys need progress. We all need progress right here. Uh, Kyle writes in, the trenches are their strongest group. I think they will be the strongest group, whether it's offense or defense, specifically defense. But I did think it was interesting that after the scrimmage on Saturday, Mel Tucker during uh, Monday's media availability said that, hey, uh, the offensive line, defensive line, both have to pick it up in the run game. He's been very optimistic, been talking up a lot of his position groups. So I wonder if that was like a, hey, these guys know that they're the strength of this team. I'm going to get something out to the public to make sure that they still have a chip on their shoulder, a little bit of an edge to them. I think that's what uh, kind of a play that was. And David, David writes a good one. I mean, God, these are all good ones. Who am I saying? Quote, we're addressing how we call plays in late game situations. Uh, David, we will get the report card. Not this fall camp, but we, we'll be able to look back in December and see if we've made any strides in that department whatsoever. Luke writes in that the, def sorry, that the tight ends can block. Jay Johnson was talking last week, actually, that Malik Carr has made great improvement in his blocking as well. It, it's going to be... Okay, it's going to be a big year for Malik Carr because it has to be a big year for Malik Carr. Like if if we are going to see how freaky of an athlete he is, how dynamic of a pass catcher he can be, it has to be this year. Like the time is now. There's a tight end battle that's wide open. It is his to lose. There are targets in the red zone that are to be had. Like it has to be Malik Carr season. And like if it's not a great season from him, Look, I, we can look back on it and just dissect if it's a Malik Carr problem or a Jay Johnson problem, but, but he's going to have to have a big year I, for all the right reasons. And last, from your ego, writes in free beer for anyone 21 and over who attends a Michigan State game at Spartan Stadium. Your ego, I absolutely love that. Uh, if you did not catch this, Cranes reported that Michigan State will be selling alcohol at four home games this year. My guess, it won't be the Central game, the Richmond game. My guess, the first game will be the Washington game. Penn State has something very similar last year where, hey, they were allowed to sell alcohol but didn't get to that until October 1st because it, it takes a little bit of time to do all these things. And to take us home, uh, we're going to just please someone right here. He goes by the name of Zanjo. He writes in at Sheehan underscore sports on Twitter. Tomorrow on Lockdown, please power rank these three. Andrew Maxwell, Tyler O'Connor, Peyton Thorne. Peyton Thorne, who like might not actually win the starting job at Auburn. When those odds came out a few weeks ago, I kind of scoffed at it and been like, he didn't go down to Auburn to be a backup, but re reports coming out of their practice. Like, I don't even know if he's the second guy. He might be the third guy. We'll see, though. A lot of game left down in Auburn as well. I'm going to power rank these three if I need a win. I'm going to I'm gonna go with Peyton Thorne. I mean, I know what I just said is ridiculous, but, yeah, I'm going to go with the guy that has won a Peach Bowl. Yes, I mean, he was – incredible in the play action, but I'm going to go Tyler O'Connor number two. Look, I don't even think Tyler O'Connor is a top 10 reason that 2016 uh, season went the way it did. A lot of crazy Looney Tune things going on with that team. 
Uh, so I'm going to go Tyler O'Connor number two. Look, he wasn't a fantastic quarterback, but I don't think he was a, a complete bowl of dog food, uh, to say the least. And then number three, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure the kid is an incredibly nice guy. I mean, look, in 2013, a Michigan State game did not count until the announcers had the camera on Andrew Maxwell on the sideline and talked about how great of a teammate he was for sticking around after losing his battle to Connor Cook. But look, quite bluntly, there's a reason he lost that battle. I, I don't even know if he ever looked at two different receivers in the same play. It was lock into one guy, throw it there, and hope for the best. And it, it, a lot of best did not happen in 2012. Anyway, thank you for that question, Zanjo. You guys are truly the best. We will be back tomorrow, the day after that, and then will the weekend and the day after that, the day after Five days a week on Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white. Go enjoy the rest of your day. Love you all. Go Green.